Hi, greetings everyone. Um, I, Shivangi Vishwakarma, welcome you all to Manupatra's webinar series on how to use technology for increased efficiency in legal operations. The legal profession has long been characterized by its adherence to tradition and its reliance on precedent. However, in today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, manual processes, paper-based documentation, and uh, fragmented systems are simply inadequate in meeting the demands of regulatory requirements. Hence, the time has come for us to embrace the power of technology and harness its potential to drive positive change in the legal industry. At Manupatra, we are proud to be at the forefront of these technological advancements in the legal industry. Through our commitment to innovation and excellence, we have launched several cutting-edge SaaS products designed to empower legal professionals. And with that, let's get started with today's webinar on transforming compliance digitally and understand the importance of a compliance management software with my colleague, Mr. Devesh Singh Tomar. Thank you, Shivangi, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Devesh Singh Tomar, and I will be presenting to you today's uh, webinar on transforming compliance digitally. So the first question that must be understood here is, is what exactly is compliance management? See, in simple terms, uh, compliance management can be understood as a systematic process which ensures that an organization adheres to the regulatory regime of the state. And as we all know, it's a well-established notion that a regulatory regime regarding any form of business operation in India is very complex. It runs through uh, multiple law categories across many industry verticals, involves a lot of regulatory authorities, and not to forget the uh, frequency of change in the regulatory regime. So these complexities gives, gives rise to uh, a scope of error for the organization which can lead to non-compliance and which in turn leads to severe consequences such as monetary and penal uh, penalties. So the systematic, systematic process, as I previously mentioned, is an ongoing process uh, in the context of compliance management is a ongoing process uh, which involves continuous improvement and adaptation on the part of organization so as to ensure timely compliances of the law. See, as uh, regulations evolve and organizations uh, evolve or continues its operation or changes its operations or expense, there arises a need to uh, regularly review uh, your compliance program so as, to uh, so as to remain effective and responsive to the uh, emerging risks that are in, uh, around the business operations. A very good example of uh, a very good example of why it's very important to be effective and responsive to the rising risk is uh, the example of Paytm payment banks. Uh, as we have already, uh, as we have already, uh, you must have heard about that uh, RBI has barred uh, Paytm payment banks from uh, certain operations because of its non-compliance of KYC norms uh, and other directives uh, regarding the payment banks. And this has not been a very uh, isolated incident. There have been other instances uh, wherein RBI has uh, imposed certain penalties on Airtel payment banks uh, and uh, Geo uh, regarding the non-compliances of KYC and other uh, similar directives. Despite being such big organizations uh, uh, facing non-compliances and uh, penalties, uh, highlights the complexities that are um, around the uh, area of compliance management uh, in India. And this has led RBI to come out with a new direction wherein it has mandated uh, NBFCs and other regulated entities to uh, shift from the uh, traditional manual approach of compliance management to a more tech-driven approach of compliance management. Now, this uh, gives rise to another question as to why a tech-driven approach would be uh, can be a more or a compliance software can be a better approach than, uh, than a traditional approach. So the first, uh, first, uh, first advantage and one of the uh, main uh, advantages of having a compliance software is the automation of the process. Uh, when you, uh, um, when you uh, adopt a compliance software for the compliance program, uh, you get a pre-prepared list of all the compliances that are related to your business uh, uh, operation uh, in terms of law category or industry vertical or the type of establishment you are. So role shifts from tracking of uh, tracking of all the compliances to simply uh, selecting the compliances that are relevant to you 
and then assigning them to a particular individual, whoever is responsible for ensuring that the compliances are met on time. So this streamlines the whole process of the compliance. Uh, compliance this streamlines the whole process of compliance management and predefines the role of individuals who are responsible for it. Uh, and this automatically makes the whole compliance uh, uh, management program of the organization to be more consistent, efficient, and accurate. Uh, as we already, as I already mentioned before, it's very important to be uh, efficient and responsive uh, in, in terms of compliance management or in, to tackle the business uh, business risk or anything associated with the non-compliance. So as 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 soon as you streamline the whole process, make it more consistent, efficient, you're reducing the business risk here that arises. We have already seen the example of ATM payment bank as to how businesses can be very severe. Another very important advantage of a, a compliance management tool can be the centralized management. Uh, let's take an example here. Uh, a, a, there is a business operation which has uh, more than 10 business units across India, multiple sales offices or a manufacturing units. So, so it's very important for the, for the upper management or the, uh, uh, the uh, headquarters or an upper management to ha have an overview as, as to how the compliance activities are taking place uh, in their organizations. So when you adopt a compliance management tool, it gives you a single, uh, you get a single place wherein you can have access to all the information that is related to uh, your compliance activity. For example, uh, you can know uh, what are the compliances that you have assigned to any individual, what is the status of any particular compliance, how many are pending, what have been the penalties that have been charged or due to non-compliances or any information related to it. So it is a very important a uh, very uh, good thing that a central management can have when they adopt a compliance software. We've also talked about how uh, there is a major issue of frequency of changes in the regulatory regime. Uh, there is uh, every new law or an update or an amendment coming in every few days or uh, in a, in, in very frequently. So basically here, uh, when you adopt a, um, a compliance management tool, uh, you can see that uh, the tool will provide you uh, information regarding any updates that are coming uh, in the regulatory regime or if there has been any updation or an amendment in the compliance that you have to follow. This automatically increases the scalability uh, at which you can do your compliance program or do the compliance activities. Uh, let's for, say, for example, a, a particular individual has been assigned to look after the compliance of all the uh, of the complete of, of the whole, all organizations. Uh, for example, uh, there are 10 units or 15 units. No single person will be able to manage them because of the scalability, uh, scalability of basically, let's say the multiple law categories or the industry verticals, so many compliances you have to take care of. So it affects the scalability when an individual does it manually on its own. However, if you're using uh, the automation process that you can receive through a compliance software, the, the scalability of single person handling a lot of the compliances increases. So these are some of the basic or the major advantages uh, that you get because of uh, a compliance software. Now, uh, how these advantages are shifted to the uh, or look on a compliance management tool? Let's take some of the examples here. I can show you. I will show you some of the features that a compliance tool has to offer to you. Uh, I will be referring uh, to the tool that I use. Uh, I use for my operations. So, so when I log in through Manu Comply, this is the software that I use for my compliance activities. So when I log into Manu Comply, this is the uh, this is this is the landing page when I log into it. The first thing that I would like to show to you is the interactive dashboard. So this dashboard contains all the all the information in brief about all the activities that are taking place uh, in my organization related to all the compliances. For example, it shows me what are the completed compliances, what are the non-compliance one, how many are upcoming. Uh, what are the rejected ones or any legal updates. For example, let's take an example of compliance penalty. So in brief, it gives me a detail of 2023-2024 as to what are the penalties that have been charged to me uh, because of non-compliances. I can see the information here is quarter one, it gives me 10,000 rupees penalty or uh, I did not receive any penalty in quarter two and I received some penalty in quarter three and quarter four. So 
here the centralized management that we're talking about is that uh, that the upper management can have a, a look at what are the compliance activities that are taking place in my organization so here in brief they will have an access to all the information uh on a difference, for example, what are the impact of all the compliances? What are non-compliance states? What are the law categories under which the compliances are? How many compliances in which category? So all this information can be found in one single place. Another major thing we talked about was continuous updates of compliances. So here, uh, the tool provides me two types of updates. One is informative updates and the other is impact updates. So information uh, informative updates are generally those uh, in updates uh, which uh, are not directly affecting my compliances, but are in line with all the uh, uh, compliances that they uh, are involved in my business operations, but that do not directly affect my compliances. However, the impact compliances are the one which directly affects or changes my legal compliances activities. Uh, let's say, for example, if there is a certain notification by the government that the penalties for a certain type of non uh, for a certain uh, uh, compliance would be increased from 10,000 to 50,000 rupees. Now this changes my compliance activity or if a certain notification changes the applicability of a certain law, for example, in the earlier, the law was only uh, applicable to banking sector, but now it's also applicable to NBFCs or another FinTech or financial services. So now this has impacted the applicability of the law. So the compliance will change and will be operational to other people as well. So now this is an impacting update and will be updated here. However, in apart from mentioning all the updates here, uh, the tool automatically changes or updates the compliances that are present in the master sheet. So here I will give you an example of a master sheet. So here I can access the master sheet here. So let's take an example. I will choose that I want to see the compliances that are related to Companies Act 2013. So I can select Companies Act 2013 and give you a search here. So the tool will provide me all the information that is that are related to uh, um, companies like 2013. What are the uh, all the compliances? It may run through certain rules, regulation, guidelines. And here you can see there are certain compliances that have already assigned to by an organization to itself, uh, selecting that these are the relevant compliances. These are uh, laws applicable over me. So they have assigned, selected, and assigned these compliances to themselves. Now, if I have to, assign, for example, now I'm checking it again. So now you can see that uh, this company's management and administrative rule is applicable to me. And I want this compliance to be assigned to me now. So I'm increasing the number of compliances that are applicable to me. So here it's uh, not like that uh, you will have to choose the compliance at one time. If after a certain point you think that there are more compliances that are applicable to me, I can always go in the master sheet and select other compliances as well. So let's see, I have to basically I decide that these two compliances are also applicable to me. I can simply select it and assign it to myself. So here the compliance will be added to the company successfully. Now, the second step after selecting the compliances would be to assign that compliance to a certain individual who will look after or ensure that the compliance is met on time. So here, recently, if we take the current examples, for example, let's also see that you want to see what the compliance is, what are the details of the compliance. You can always select check what the compliance description is, what are the type of compliance, who it is applicable to, what is the authority under which it is uh, applicable. And you can check the risk assessment, penalties, if there is any additional information regarding the compliance. So you can check all this information here. Once you select this, you will be, uh, you can select this element and you can assign it to a certain person. For example, I want this to be, uh, selected to HDL office. I can select a department to which it's applicable. I can mark it to a user and an approval. So basically uh, user and approver uh, uh, as also referred to in the industry as maker and checker. So basically there will be a certain individual who will be assigned and will have to ensure that the compliance is met. And after in, uh, complying, it will have to report back to the approver who will later, who will check if the compliance was met properly and then approve it. Without the approval of the person uh, who is the approver here, so if without the uh, approver uh, marking is added that the compliance has been done properly, the compliance only marked as completed on the tool. So basically I have selected, I can select a unit head and department head as well, and then I can simply assign the uh, compliance here. You can also check the status of any compliance that has been assigned previously. So I can simply go here and 
check what are the compliances that have been previously marked here. So these were all the compliances that have been assigned to certain individuals. If I have to check, if I see, basically if you're coming back after two months or a year to check whether what are the compliances that have been assigned, you can go back again and check all the information again. What are the rules and regulations regarding what is the task here? You can check all the information here. Now, you, there, is a, there are a lot more filters here. So you can check these compliances on the basis of you want to check the status of compliance related to certain act. Uh, or using a, a compliance ID or through a regulation or the impact assessment, how uh, or what the penalty are or what the impact would be. Let's take an example. I want to check what are the completed compliances here. So I will search completed and I will search. So here it has given me the information of those compliances that has been marked as completed. So basically it means that the um, uh, user has completed the assignment and then the approver has approved them. I can go and I can check the trail as to when and how its compliances was completed. So it will give me a date as to when it was assigned, when it was completed, how any whether there are any marks. For example, here it says the compliance was delayed a little, and after that, the approver is approved that the compliance has been done properly. So you can find all this detail, every single activity that are related to compliance, when it was assigned, when it was done, when it was approved, all that information be available here. Now these information, all these uh, assignments related to these statutory compliances. Uh, in addition to statutory compliances, here you will also have an option to see what are the internal compliances are. For example, there are certain tasks that are assigned to by the organization internally. Uh, there are some internal matters. Uh, for example, here if you see there can be an annual sales meet or there has to be a fire safety drill, any other meeting, IP registration meeting, annual review, or XYZ, anything uh, for that matter. And this list is not exhaustive. You it is very inclusive. If you ever want to increase the list, you want to add, um, assign a new here. You can always come here, assign. Uh, there will be an option from here, Taskmaster. You can always go assign a new uh, type of uh, compliances that you want internal assignment in your company. You can always add a new to the list, and then you can come here. You can select, for example, here let's see XYZ. You want certain type of assignment to be assigned. After that, there will be, uh, you can allot it to a particular unit or department. Then there will be again a user and approval policy. And then you can assign a due date for the compliance. For example, I want the assignment to be uh, done on 15th March 2024. So you can always assign it a due date and then accordingly the compliance will be restored as just like a regulatory compliance. Now, after that, it's very important for any compliance tool to have a repository of documents. Uh, for example, if uh, in terms of what are the forms that they have to fill, what are the forms that are prescribed by any regulation, or when you uh, mark any uh, compliance is completed or that you have done it on your end, then you will have to store a proof of it uh, as to saying that I've done it completely. For example, there is a form prescribed by the company side. For, let's, let's check an example here. For example, here, if I want to check there as compliances that are related to companies act, I will see what are the forms that I have to fill or complete on their end. I will mark, for example, here, just saying that there's a compliance ID and a compliance name uh, under the companies at 2013 or companies in corporation in 2014, there is a certain form that is to be filled to ensure the compliance is done properly. So I can simply go there, download this form and then fill it accordingly. Now, after filling and submitting it uh, as per the compliances, you will have to store the proof that you have properly filled so that the approver can later check it uh, that the compliance was done properly or not. So here I will go at compli compliance proof. This would have been submitted at the time of marking the compliance is completed. So here, these are the document proof that have been related to these compliances. You can always click on it, download it, and then view it later. Now let's come to another feature that is set alerts. See, uh, every time you assign, uh, um, you select a compliances and assign it to a particular individual, based on the due date of it, the system automatically sends alerts to you uh, based on basically uh, that you want uh, the alerts can be 15 days before the due date or five days before the due date, two days before the or, or on the date on which the compliance is due. Now, in addition to these automatic updates, if you want any new updates regarding any compliances, you want additional alerts. So basically, you can go select the compliance ID. This Compliance ID is generally available in the master sheet in which you have selected and assigned the compliance. This compliance ID is always mentioned there. Now, in this compliance ID, you can always go select, for example, I want it 10 days before the due date, or in the second alert, I want it four days, and this is one day before the compliance date. 
and I can mark any, for example, I can take any remark or any reminder that you wanted specifically related to this compliance. You can write it here and then submit it. Now, after you submit it, system will always automatically send you the alerts related to this compliance 10 days before the due date, four days before the due date, and on the day or one day before the due date. This will be an addition to the automatic alert, which will always come uh, when you assign uh, any compliances to your organization. Now, one another task that is very important and uh, can be a very tedious task in terms of in, in, when you do any compliance manually or in the traditional approach is the building a report regarding it. If you come, see, uh, there are multiple uh, units uh, in your organization. Uh, if you have a worse organization, there are a lot of compliances regarding a lot of units, or offices, various sales offices, various department, law categories, industries, industry verticals, or the type of staff management they are. So when you do it manually, the data that you require to fully complete, build a unified report uh, is very huge. And then it creates a lot of difficulty and time in terms of uh, the time that is required to build that report. However, if you use the tool directly or use uh, when you use technology or as a compliance software tool to make it, you can always do it with a drag of a drag of any tool. For example, let's take an example here. I want to know what are the compliances and uh, that are related to company act, And I want to check which of them are pending. Now, I, this is the major uh, flux of the report that I want to check what are the com uh, uh, compliances related to company act that are pending and has been assigned to my organization. Now, I want in my report particulars such as compliance ID, the name of the compliance, what act it falls under, what rules it falls under, what is the current status of it, what are the uh, impact it will have, uh, what is the due date of the compliance, uh, or any other, for example, let's also take the, what are the penalty of non-compliance. So I want all these particulars uh, in my report regarding companies that uh, compliances that are pending. I can simply just select all these heads and I can generate a report instantly regarding this. So all these compliances, all this report is automatically processed there. It just took me a click of a hand to simply just build up a report, a huge report of data which could turn across many offices, uh, multiple uh, offices or multiple individuals to whom the particular uh, compliance has been assigned. All this information here in the click of a hand. So these were the major uh, features that I wanted to uh, discuss, uh, that I wanted to discuss in terms of compliance management software. Uh, I will be happy to take uh, the questions uh, if you have any uh, along with my colleague here uh, Abhay I'm Abhay from the Manu Comply team any questions that you have anything that you want to ask or anything that needs to be explained you can write here or we have an email ID also if you have anything to share you can share there as well So Manu Comply at the rate manupatra.com is where you can reach out to us in terms of if there is any queries, you can like in future, if you want to ask something, if you want to inquire about the commercials, have a on-purpose demo. Okay, can you explain the approval process one against once? Okay, so the approval process is very, very simple. The idea behind a tool or any good compliance management, contract management tool will be that it is easily able, like any user who is accessing it for the first time also, they should be easily able to access the platform. So it, they do not require any kind of training because not the users have the bandwidth for the trainings or not the tool should be very complicated that there should be a training required. So what I'll do is, as requested by Desha, I'll just take you through the mechanism where the user is, like how the user is doing a task and how this is accessible in the system. So I'm just accessing it. So this is my user's login. I've just logged in from my user account. So very simple, I can see what is upcoming, what is completed. So whenever I click on an upcoming task, I get a list of the tasks that I have to perform. 
Now, how do I need to do this task? Everything is very simple. I'm just getting a few options here. So I can either view. So what is this compliance actually wants me to do? So that I can read from here. The second one would be I can, if I click on the red button, I say ki I have completed this task. So suppose it was completed today. This was the document that I have uh, built that I want to upload it in the document. So I can use anything from here and I can put done. So once this is done, so this will be marked successfully completed from the user end. So user has completed this task, it will shown as completed for him. But this, our particular system has a matrix, which is called a checker and a mover, like a doer matrix. So doer of the particular compliance will also have a checker so that that person can verify whether the compliance was done correctly, whether the document submitted was done correctly or not. So for that, let me hop on to the approvers. So again, this is very, very simple. I can go to my approvers ID. And the user as well as the approver are getting regular mails. So once the user has completed a task, the approver will get a mail that a task is done by the user. You can go on to the system and complete, review it. So that kind of a thing is already done in the system so i can click from here so again whenever i am logging in as an approver again i get to see this icon where i can see what is to be done and i can take i can see what was done so i can see this was completed by vinod dua on today's date this was the document that is uploaded so i can take a look at the document also from here and i can see whether this was completed or not so it's okay i can write any comment i can either approve it or reject it so once it gets approved by the approver, then only then this particular compliance is marked as completed for the admin. So very simple that you can like user can log in from their account, see what compliance is to be done. They can also monitor their calendar. And here also we have metrics also that Devesh might have gone into a little bit where like once a compliance get missed, different users like somebody ahead of the department might be getting emails that this compliance needs to be looked into. So that is also one of the things that we do. Okay. Um, so Akshat sir is asking, are we covering FSSAI compliances? So as I think Devesh has already said, we are covering all kinds of compliances right from the municipal level to the, to the level in terms of the state as well as central level. So all these compliances are covered. We are covering all the 30 many industries in the, so FSSAI, Compliances are also being covered by the system. Any other queries? Yes, we have a query of, uh, do you cover pharmaceutical compliances as well? Right. All kinds of compliances. <laughs> a to Z for all the companies and uh, for registered companies, for SEBI registered companies, for NBFCs. Uh, pharmaceutical, again, is one of the critical, those kind of sectors where we have a lot of clients. So is again, a very important sector for us. So we cover pharmaceutical compliances also. This is a very interesting question and I believe multiple people will have this. Uh, do you provide the service of filing the compliances as well? Uh, no, no. In terms of the filing of the compliances, this has to be done by the user. So there is no compliance, like no nobody will be doing it for you. But you, but you can do it from the system. We'll be giving you absolute kind of a technical know-how. Like what we'll try to do, minimize whatever is to be done. We'll be giving you a crisp summary of that. Whatever form is to be uploaded, we'll be giving you that information. But the task in itself has to be done by the user. And uh, through this mechanism only that this particular task is being done. And not by the Manu Comply team. And... Uh, one very good question that we received is, does the tool support FSSAI compliances? Yes, I think we've already covered that one. We are covering FSSAI compliances in the tool. Uh, Abed, we have one more question. What are the consequences of non-compliance? Okay, so what are the consequences of non-compliance is a very broad question. In terms of, uh, there might be certain penalties that might be there. In certain compliances, there is imprisonment clause also that is there. So all these can also be monitored from the system. So if you put it like, if you are doing a particular compliance, 
from the tool and you suppose you found out that this is not complied and again there is a penalty involved and the user can also put in the penalty here so let me show you how to do it from the system so again this can be also a platform where the user can suggest like this is the penalty that was involved and you as an admin level you will be able to see whether this was like how much penalty you have incurred over the different quarters or in a financial year so suppose this is a compliance that the due days were 30th of september now it's getting completed on a particular date say suppose today i completed it so the system will give me an option to put in a penalty also so i can put in like this is 5000 and i can update here so that if i'm putting some it's done on this date completed delete so the system, when I go to the my main system, it will show that there was a penalty that was charged for 5,000 rupees in this particular quarter. So that also takes care from the system. Any other queries? Uh, yes, we have received one more query. Uh, how many statutes are covered? Okay, so again, all kinds of statutes in terms of if you are very concerned with kind of a industries or for statutes or fit. So we have also given it on the website itself. So all kinds of compliances we are covering. So that is from right from the central level to municipal level also because Manupatra, we have been in this industry for 25 years now. And the basic job for this particular company has been content aggregators. So we have been taking information from different kinds of sources and that has been our forte. So it will be available on time from different industries, even like many other compliance providers might also be there, but they are still relying on Manupatra to get their primary source of information. So this is one of the those platforms where you will get all the information and you will get it on time before you get anywhere else. So in terms of updates also, what we promise is between 24 to 48 hours, all the updates are also getting done in the system itself. Right. Any other queries or we can like if any other queries are there or if you want to go on, like if you want to access the website. So this is the uh, email ID that you have to go to manucomply at the rate manupatra.com where we can set up a demo also. For your organization, we'll, we'll understand what is the requirement from your side because it is also like it's a hand-holding thing where any new prospect that is coming to us, we are understanding their requirements and giving them a like a toolkit that is more required for them and for their organization. Shivangi, any other queries? Uh, yes, we have one more query. Yeah. Uh, do Manu Comply provide a direct filing option to file MCA annual filings for CS or CAs or advocates to file through this tool directly. Or we can manage here, but filing needs to be done from our end in respective sites. Uh, Shivangi, that will be the second one. So where it has to be done by the user, it does not provide a direct link for the filing. Okay, and uh, we have one more question. Do you have something for universities, colleges, or hospitals? Uh, right. So like in terms of if any college is there or if any hospital is there hospital might have many more compliances like recently i was having one discussion with uh, one of the major hospitals in india so medical devices there is new compliances that are coming up regarding that pharmaceutical companies so it's a very heavily regulated uh, like a uh, industry so there are compliances for hospitals even for colleges, if you have a firm or if you have a trust that is operating all over India and you want to maintain your compliances, because again and again, we are growing into a much more compliance regulated country. There are new notifications that are coming. There are new uh, press releases that are happening on a day to day basis. And it becomes very, very important to keep in tune what are, what is the new law, what is the new update on a particular in any industry that you're working on. So again, if you are interested as a trust to make sure that all your compliances are in place and everything is happening on time, so you might consider for a tool like a um, compliance management tool, yes. Right. Any other, Shivani? Uh, 
uh, dear participants, we'll be wrapping up the session now. So if you have any more questions, you can reach out to us uh, on manucomply at manupatra.com or contact at manupatra.com. Uh, the number and the email is mentioned on the screen itself. Uh, thank you for your valuable insights, Abhay and Devish. And I'd like to extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us today. Um, your participation and engagement have truly made this webinar a success. Uh, we have our next session on AI and law practice being conducted by Ms. Kanandru, who is a professor at The Hague University, Netherlands. Uh, it's on 29th of Feb. And in case you are wondering how IP management works online, please join us on 5th March at 4 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for joining. If you have more queries, you can always write us to monocomplier.com.